Uh, for starters, just by show of hands, uh, who all here went to high school? <laughs> About what I expected. Uh, and how many people here went to college? Whoa, okay. Uh, so, out of everybody that went to college, who went because they wanted to? Still hands. Okay. And who went because they wanted to get a job? Okay. So, out of all those hands, out of the last one, there were like two people that didn't go for a job, so I don't Knowledge is great. Uh, so out of all those people, who, who ever considered going to a vocational institution to get a job? Nobody. Okay. So what I want to do with this speech is kind of explore that dichotomy. Um, I feel like in America, it's always been assumed that the best way to get a job is by going to college, getting a four-year degree. But the rises in the cost of education and a stagnant job market really challenge those preconceptions that we have. So I want to explore the history of higher education, both in terms of college and in vocational education. Um, I want to examine the economic feasibility of higher education as opposed to vocational school. And um, I also want to assess the job market that's currently in shambles and make inferences as to what future employment opportunities could look like. So the history of post-secondary education in the United States is something of a hegemonic structure, right? So that's a big idea. Let's unbox it. Uh, American colleges started off as institutions that were primarily for white males, like a lot of things in the country. Um, the people that were going to colleges were, most, for the most part, sons of clergymen. They were studying to be uh, lawyers, doctors, and ministers. Eventually, schools started to integrate, um, and uh, that, that selective class of elites that were able to go to colleges started to broaden a little bit. Um, vocational school, on the other hand, was never quite so prestigious. Uh, vocational schooling was inspired by tracks that early call or not early colleges, early high schools relied on. If you were a good student um, from a certain area code, you would typically be put in a track that was focused on getting you to college. But if you were a student from another certain area code or a student of color, you were typically put in a track that was more focused on vocational education and putting you to work. Um, so I think that is really indicative of um, uh, this, this idea of hegemony in education, right? Um, so today in America, prestige is typically associated with attaining a four-year degree. And I think that just comes from this history of elite ruling class being able to go to colleges, whereas vocational edu uh, institutions aren't quite as lauded. A 2003 study from America found that 87% of Americans believe high school students should go to college instead of taking a job after school, which is a very fine belief to have. We clearly all have it. Um, but in the European Union, 71% of people believe vocational education and training has a positive image in their country. I don't think that uh, that sentiment is necessarily shared in America, and it's really hard to gauge it because there, there isn't even very much uh, information and studies done on vocational education in America. Um, but to extend that thought, 82% of individuals in the European Union believe that vocational education training meets or exceeds employer expectations. And I can't really say that same statistic exists for people achieving four-year degrees in America. Uh, so let's, let's uh, uh, try to unbox this idea of financial responsibility in going to college. Research conducted by the Idaho Department of Labor found that the average bachelor's degree costs $127,000. Um, yeah, that's a lot. That's a ton. Uh, and on top of that, 70% of students take out loans to go to school. So if you want to marry that 70% of students with the 87% of Americans that think you should go to college, you're looking at about 61% of Americans that are going into pretty significant debt to achieve a, uh, 
uh, and education. And I'm going to defer to Senator Elizabeth Warren on this one. Um, in talking about the affordability of loans, she said, every single day, this country invests in big banks by lending it money at near zero rates. And we need to make the same kind of investments lending money to students who are trying to get an education. Um, but we don't. And that also plays into this systematic structure of, um, of uh, who, who's, who's lending the money, this idea that we have to go to college. Um, and when you look at that number, that $127,000 figure to attain a four-year degree, and you compare it to the average starting salary in America, which is just shy of $50,000, um, you're looking at quite a bit of uh, uh, payments on interest, especially at a 6.4% rate. Uh, now, 39% of graduates from 2014 and 2015 aren't making that $50,000 uh, entry salary. Most of them, 30, well not most of them, 39% of them are making $25,000 or less at their, yeah, at their starting <laughs> salary. Um, and that doesn't really, uh, that, that's, that doesn't help pay off that $127,000 that the Idaho Department of Labor found. Um, now when you compare that to the average eight month vocational education program that costs $16,000, and gives you placement into a position with a starting salary of typically $37,000 a year, the numbers line up a little bit better. Uh, this is, of course, $5,000 less than the median salary of state uh, um, of uh, graduates from state schools, but that's only speaking about the, the students that are actually able to get a job. So what, is, what are the prospects for uh, a job market for post-secondary students? Uh, well, as of May of this year, 13.8% of 18 to 29 year olds are out of work, which is huge. That is like almost three times the number of the unemployment rate of the country. And that's us, that's millennials. 51% um, of graduates from the class of 2014 and 2015 said they're working in a job that doesn't even require their degree. So, uh, when, when you consider that many vocational education programs offer job placements for students, it, it doesn't necessarily say that um, college is insufficient or incapable of meeting our needs for potential uh, uh, employees, but I think we need to reevaluate how we're looking and perceiving vocational education, especially when you consider a robotic workforce that's on the horizon for uh, for American industry, and this isn't like tinfoil hat. I'm not going crazy here, but when you look at businesses like McDonald's and AMC that are really quickly replacing human interaction with robotic interfaces, I think you need to consider who's going to be maintaining those degrees. Is it going to be art history majors, or is it going to be people that went to vocational institutions and know how to maintain? Um, know how to maintain those kinds of things. Uh, I think this, this point is particularly important when you consider that neither American political party, Republicans or Democrats, neither of them have anything in their platform stipulating how they intend to regulate a robotic workforce, which is uh, particularly amusing when you consider the fact that uh, we have a president who was elected on saving an industry coal that has 76,000 jobs in it. When you look at the potential job losses to a robotic industry, um, I think it just emphasizes uh, where we need to focus on uh, training our future workers. So uh, I'm going to open this up to a Q&A now. And um, yeah, a, a lot of numbers, a lot of things to chew on. So hopefully we can all get through this together, guys. John Michael. So a little bit of an anecdotal thing here. My best friend never went to college. Uh, he works in heating and air installation did vocational stuff, like I think they work on an apprenticeship uh, method of training new people. He is way happier than I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that's, oh. <laughs> it's anecdotal. It's anecdotal, John Michael, but it's also comparative, because you're particularly unhappy. So, <laughs> so to say that he's doing better than you is, Big, you know, that's a big thing to unbox. But I mean, my sister is the same way. She, she got a GED 
and just started working for Tesla. She's, you know, a hippie, a greeno. And uh, Elon Musk just happened to give her a bunch of stock. When, they, when Tesla went public, it was worth $16 a share, and now it's upwards of $300 a share. So my sister is rich just for, just for going to work for Elon Musk. So, you know, you, this idea that you need a college education to get, you know, to make any type of salary is hilarious, yeah. I think there's also a cultural component to, the, like a, I guess an expectation that people go to college to grow up, to become worldly, to become aware of other um, ideas and points of view. And I think to some extent that's, legitimate, but I think there's a lot of inflation to that idea as well. Like, because a similar anecdotal uh, story, my best friend went to three years at UCF, hated all of it, um, was like two classes short of graduating with a business degree, and um, dropped out and moved to Alaska, <laughs> and worked in a lodge with seven other people for like, six months, and then was like, I'm going to machine school. And that's always what I've liked, and that's what I want to do anyway and was going to get a business degree to take over the family machine business. I was like, screw this, i got enough of that. Um, <laughs> it is, yeah, again, like so much happier and didn't ever get, I don't, I never felt like he got that like real sense of like coming to self or whatever people feel like you do when you go to college, like finding yourself or whatever. You know, just found themselves in here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think people find themselves like, to use that ridiculous, um, uh, thing more through doing what they actually enjoy or doing something that brings them fulfillment mm -hmm. rather than kind of haphazardly navigating through our history classes. I think uh, you raise a really interesting point because there is definitely this this preconception that you go to college and, and you find yourself, right? I remember this this uh, fantastic meme of uh, Nemo from Finding Nemo, mm -hmm. and um, he had like he had like heavy hair and uh, like torn jeans, and he was meditating. It was like Nemo went to, to college and found himself. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, there, we talked about uh, traveling abroad the other day, and you know, it's this package. It's this nice little package that says here you can go to uh, another country and learn, and we'll take care of everything for you. Mm -hmm. But the feasibility of it is, uh, it, it's not fair because, I mean, this package is way more expensive than if you were to just go on your own right. and actually look at, you know. So, um, we, college uh, offers a lot of, uh, a, a huge, what, a, a bunch of ways for people to explore different aspects of culture in the world, mm -hmm. uh, but at a pretty hefty price, you know. Yeah. A lot of the times you have to move away, a lot of the times you have to pay, um, out of state fees, which is insane, uh, mm -hmm. graduate fees, which are also insane. Um, and uh, a lot of the time, that's not even necessarily that person's particular path. Samantha? Um, you know, I think on to what you were saying, I don't think that it's going to college necessarily that helps someone. I'm going to change the verbiage from finding yourself to growing up. Mm -hmm. Like, because I think it's different. There's, I know people from my high school that went to vocational schools and have done really well and some that like still act like they're in high school and they the concept of like paying their rent on time blows their mind <laughs> and I think that's not so much like going to school but there is something in getting away from home and not having your parents there to like do everything for you or hey you need to get this done like I've seen more growth in the people that have gone farther away or left home to go to college just because they were getting away from home, not because they went to college. Mm -hmm. So I really like this point because I think it's, it's not necessarily indicative of the institution, right? I don't think anybody can say college makes you grow up or college helps you grow up any more than you could say about vocational institutions. I think what you're observing is uh, are these people that are growing up by going out and trying to find themselves, I I think that they would probably find that means regardless. Yeah. Um, so when you look at the people that end up staying in their hometown and going to community colleges and going to vocational institutions, um, they're kind of just on the preconceived track that society has for them. Uh, they're, they're sort of uh, just drifting aimlessly through life, right, to categorize these whole people. I mean, there's some, like, because UNF and JU are in my hometown, a lot of people stay and just go mm -hmm. to UNF. And then there's also vocational schools. I've noticed that it doesn't matter which, if you go to the big university or you go to the vocational school, 
if you left to go, like I know for some reason people went to vocational schools in Gainesville instead of staying in Jacksonville, they did better just because they got out for a little bit on their own. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, that, that, that probably plays into it because you're getting exposed to new things. Um, uh, fair mind. Um, kind of going off of what you just mentioned, Samantha, um, I noticed I went to a, a private high school, so like it was the expectation to go to college. Um, they like boasted when everyone graduates about the statistics of how many people are accepted, um, which are always super skewed. But anyways, <laughs> um, I had quite a few friends that decided not to go to college. Um, but at least in my personal life, I think I've seen some sort of correlation between the income level of their parents and how much or how little they grow up, so to speak. Um, like my friends that their parents um, like weren't as well off and maybe weren't as able to help their kids as much financially or like take on financial responsibility for them. Those kids that stayed at home were less likely to grow up, but the kids that did I say backwards? The kids that didn't have, didn't grow up as wealthy were more likely to grow up because they were forced to take on more responsibility. Um, but the ones that their parents could just buy them a nice new truck or buy them a house, like they obviously didn't grow up very much. Exactly. And uh, again, just kind of playing into this idea of the expectation of going to college um, and who does and who doesn't. And uh, again, I just want to go back to I really think that depends on the person. Like we've all gone back to our hometown uh, and seen our friends from high school that are, you know, not doing anything. And it's a bummer. It sucks. Like they work at Red Lobster and they smoke all day and they, like you said, Samantha, they aren't able to make rent and it's really a bummer. Um, but that's just, if they're happy, I think that's, that's really the gauge of success, right? Dr. D? Oh, just, it's kind of a digression, but I just wanted to say it. It took me a long time to figure figure out how not to be a snob, <laughs> right? Um, because I think when you ha come from a, a kind of privileged background, it's, it's hard to see at first. Um, and one of the things that I'll, t story I'll tell in myself is that when I went into my master's program and walked into the kind of major area, um, I, w I was kind of dismissive of the secretaries. Um, and my major professor was sitting at one of the desks, of the secretary's desks. Um, and she later sort of pointed that out to me. It turns out she was a bigger snob than I was. Um, <laughs> um, but, but, and also uh, culturally, I guess, Yankee too, that I've learned um, from my wife, who's very Southern. Um, I've never met anybody that talks to everyone the same without any sort of judgment. Um, but that's hard to do. Um, but I th it's just a kind of caution. It took me a long time to sort of figure, and I'm still struggling to do that and, and figuring it out. That's all, just a comment. So I wanted to kind of touch on the what vocational school kind of lacks that um, some would argue is valuable in a liberal arts degree. So, um, you know, I've had to take while at Florida State here a few, quite a few courses uh, that kind of like changed perspectives on different cultural things. Uh, I took history of the Seminoles here, um, taking you know, political economy and media, just different classes that uh, present a different perspective of the life around us that you know wouldn't be available in vocational school. Um, like, where do you think uh, could we like find a better way to? Uh, you know, consider those perspectives, or are they super important now? And like, kind of, what's your thought on vocational school missing out on this? Um, I think it's a great point, and and that idea kind of plays into this idea, uh, this notion of growing up in college, right? Because you're developing these uh, cultural and political um, ideas that will probably influence you for for a little while. Um, and will probably dictate what your political and cultural ideas and uh, are down the road. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think vocational education is necessarily uh, lacking in that department because college higher education is here to teach you how to think, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in those two realms, in those two examples you brought up, it's teaching you, uh, it's giving you ideas, a, a basic schematic for how you can think on uh, 
in terms of political economy and in cultural exposure. Uh, that uh, is great for personal development, but not necessarily uh, required for uh, getting a job. Yeah. Uh, you know, it'll make you a better person for sure. You'll be more interesting at dinner parties, but you know, you're not gonna get <laughs> fucking invited to any because you don't have a job. Uh, so that's, um, that's uh, I guess, my response to that. Um, I think also the idea that you can't have um, a well-rounded education without going to a university is sort of an antiquated ideal, especially now with the, like the open source world that we live in. It seems like everything you could ever want to know is at your it's at your disposal, right? With the, either at a really cheap cost or relatively free. There are so many sites like uh, Lynda.com or um, edX or Academic Woods, I think it's called, where you can take courses like lecture series courses from Harvard and Stanford on literally anything you want. Mm -hmm. So if, I think you, if you know yourself to be a self-starter and you know that you have the personal discipline to not need to go to college and get like adult light, mm -hmm. basically, I think you could definitely have that same cultural experience where you could take some of that $127,000 and go bum around the world for two years and get yeah. yourself that way. Well, but if you're, that. here's um, the interesting thing about your example is I think we can all agree in this classroom uh, culture and political exposure, those are important things. Mm -hmm. uh, but to, to inflict those ideas on somebody who's just looking to get a job, they, they don't necessarily reflect those ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's fine. You know, somebody from Wakulla probably doesn't care too much about uh, the, the cultural identity of the world mm -hmm. as a whole, um, and isn't really too concerned with what's going on politically uh, as long as they don't feel oppressed. Uh, and, and of course, I'm, I'm generalizing people from Wakulla right now, um, but they, uh, they're from Wakulla. I don't know what to say. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I think this idea that they, uh, the access is there, you're right. Um, but I don't think that the people that are interested in vocational education right now are necessarily interested in it. That, not to say that it can't change. Right. Hopefully we see a, a bigger vocational workforce and then if there's a demand for it, maybe there will be uh, um, a revolution in terms of how, uh, how much liberal arts is taught in, in vocational education or at least uh, how, how exposed those, uh, those students are to it, Abby. Yeah, but isn't this idea that people just want to get a job like something that just perpetuates this ignorance in our society? Like, okay, if people from Wakulla just want to get a job and never, I don't know very much about Wakulla, but I'm assuming it's pretty hegemonic. So if they don't like ever interact with a black person and then they're like, Trump is great, and then they can't, you know, it just continues this line of thinking that's really just but it, it, it continues not your line of thinking, and that's what that's what's irksome. And I get it because uh, I hate having the argument with my dad over why uh, uh, sustainable uh, ways of powering the country are you know are worth it, why it's better than coal. But that's that's just his belief, and you know not to get all America y, but that's kind of the idea, right? Is that you're allowed to have that belief. If you're comfortable, and that's really where that, um, uh, how that hegemony is able to uh, persist is through comfort, is through people being fine in their bubble, not needing to, to uh, find another way, another means of uh, expression, um, or, uh, you know, needing to, to veer from their comfort zone. Uh, so I, I don't think it's inherently problematic for people to just want to get a job and be comfortable. Um, I think that's, yeah, I think that's a totally fine place to be in your life. I do think something that um, universities can mimic from vocational schools is how they help place them into jobs. Because my brother, he went to vocational school, and the only time he was ever unemployed, I want to say in the last five years, his first three years, each summer he had to take off of work and go back to class to learn more skills and then after that his um, pay rate would increase and so but they set them up and they make sure like okay once this job starts stops we're going to place you with another one and like you said millennials our unemployment rate is extremely high and i think that's a lack of really one teaching us how to get a job or providing like those resources for us. Mm -hmm. um, I totally agree with you. I, I really think it's uh, kind of an ethical obligation 
of universities to, uh, to see to it that their students are getting employed. And it also seems like it would be in their best interest to have high um, uh, employment rates. But, uh, you know, we have job fairs, we have these stupid uh, uh, little markets at Market <laughs> Wednesday where, you know, you come and you talk to people about becoming an intern and, like, who cares? I don't. I, you could care less. And, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. Why would you want to travel uh, halfway across the country to not get paid? Mm -hmm. right. You know, it's, 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 it, it makes no sense. So, yeah, I, I do think that universities need to work with corporations to find job placement for, uh, for their students. Um, and really mirror vocational institutions in that way. Um, I think I have time for one more. Did, did you have something? Jeremy? I was just going to say that at some point people just need to feed their families in, <laughs> exactly. in regards to like like educating people on like how to be a better American. But like my parents are in an AC business and from day to day their employees aren't concerned about that. Like they just want to be able to put food in the like mouths of the people they love. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, just to wrap things up really quick. Uh, first of all, I really enjoyed this Q&A. Uh, we talked a lot about um, this idea of growing up in college, uh, and uh, I hope I hope I was able to um, not persuade you because that's not what kind of a speech this is. <laughs> but uh, inform you on uh, po the possibility of uh, also gaining new perspectives and growth in vocational education. So thank you.